fell into my weapon because I don't have a shocking grasp in my mage's spell list because mm. I did not prepare for this attack. <laughs> uh, Um, okay, regardless, uh, Zephyros needs to get in there and get in with this, with this battle. So Zephyros is going to move, let's say, to about there then, and then he's going to cast a magic, no, he's going to cast a flaming snow. Let's, let's run all the way up to him and attack him. Okay, Let's so, you, do so you're flying. Um, yeah. Okay. In fact, I don't have to go straight up to him. I can I can stay a little bit away if I want. Yep. Uh, in fact, my reach is ten, right? Not five. Yep. So that's ten feet away. So he's ten feet away. Darn it! I was trying to see if I can avoid him from five foot stepping into my square. Um. Uh, Okay, so I am going to do a full round of attacks here. You only get one because you moved. <clears throat> oh, oh crap. Yes, okay. <laughs> so it's going to be two-handed again. So it is 1d20 plus 8 because there's no longer any haste. Correct. Your magical staff comes thundering in and you strike the creature. Okay. For what is substantially less damage than I had, than I had hoped. 1d8 plus 10. Good. 16. 16 becomes 8. Uh, the thing is now bloodied. But Can I still 5 foot step? No, you're done. Uh, once, you, once you've moved... <laughs> I know, uh, I was just trying. Yeah. <laughs> uh, players. Alright. <laughs> Professor, what are you doing? Uh, the professor, I think he looks like this one's about had it. He's going to not concentrate on this. It'll linger for two rounds. Can it, as part of him lingering, it walk up and watch Solara do the error reading sure. with his butt still hanging out? Are you really not going to help me kill it? <laughs> About. Yeah, professor's voice comes from behind you, even, even this... though this this professor who really needs a belt <laughs> is looking at what Zalara is doing. The shadow's looking around, uh, confused. Where did all of its buddies go? What, uh, what's the professor doing? I will. What's the range on magic missiles? Uh, medium. Is long enough. Not long. Uh, okay. I'm gonna do a magic missile spell recall and do it again. What's the action of spell recall? Quick action. Okay. It's a swift? Yes. Uh, so that's a level five magic missile, so it's three. Don't think you can interrupt your full round action to recall it and cast it again. Dual spell casting says, as a full round action, you can cast two spells. You can't do a swift in the middle of a full round action. Uh, okay. Maybe I it's still not bad, though. Yeah. Three, four plus three is, is decent damage. You can do a swift before you do the full round, or you can do it after. You, you have to have the spells ready. Um, it's a good thought, though. I will... Spell recall my vanish. You can spell recall the magic missile and then do your full full action. Oh, you only have one prepared. Is yeah. what you're saying? Okay, yeah, that's that's why. Okay, that's fine. Okay. Um, that's fine. Uh, I will spell recall the vanish to start. Yep. Um, I will magic missile. So it's. What level? Uh, I'm a level 5 magus, which is where this is coming from, so it's 3d... 3d4 plus 3, 3D. and it's force damage, so it harms the incorporeal oh, creature. Oh yeah, it goes, goes direct, yeah. Without being halved. 6... 
you, you missing 2d4? 2d4. So 10 damage mm -hmm. destroys the last shadow. Is that so hard? <laughs> and the uh, professor appears. And I will walk up and start gathering my wand and probably the deck pretty soon. I'm going to see what these statues are doing before I grab this deck up. Deck begins a patrol. Okay, Manny, Farisay, and then the Imp. All right, so um, combat ends. Um, the statues do, are, are all looking at the, uh, at the deck and have basically, for a moment they were lifelike and now they've sort of returned to statue form, but they're all looking at the direction of where the deck and Zalara and the mess of the players are. Is her reading changing now that all the children are dead? Um, it, it, it feels like she her, her task is done. Like she glances at all these dark cards representing the six sacrifices. She seems really sad and slowly gathers up the cards into the deck. Uh, and then the image flickers and disappears. Thank you, girl. Rest a while longer. I'll start gathering up the cards. The way she was acting did not suggest that any of these six yeah. child shadows was her own. Yeah, it kind of was her own boy. Tech is doing a Tech is attacking tapestries and and, and doing a doing a really clumsy. Um, um, I will yell at around. him and Frank uh, Green and say, "Stand down." Wall, not enemy. When Ferris leaves the back room, the imp decides it's going to turn uh, invisible. It doesn't trust Manny and Ludo. Fair enough. They're all paying attention. Why don't you do a reading yourself? No. You okay? That's quite the idea. You notice Manny's nose is bleeding? Are you okay? Yeah, why? Rub your nose. Ah, what the... Uh, my head hurts a little bit. Kind of yeah. like we did a night of drinking or something. They smacked you pretty hard, and you... I don't take this offensively. You look dumber. He blinks. <laughs> kicks you through the doorway. <laughs> uh, once the Lara disappears, I'll gather up the cards, sit down on the floor, take the hand out, and rest it on my shoulder. There. And I will begin a reading. Okay. I'll stand right where I am. You um, and watch the statues. You actually hear Zolara in your mind. She's speaking as if she took words out of reading she did in the past, clipped them all together into the sentences that she needed to say to you. Mm -hmm. A very strange way of communicating. You should be warned about this room. This room. A creature tries to weave fate. She will see what I see if we do this here. Soon. Uh, I will immediately gather up the cards and throw them into the no. <laughs> darkest bag of hat. Okay. Anyone else's head acting funny? You know, the tapestry has fallen on top of Texarac again, and he's slashing at it and trying to <laughs> try, try to poke his way through it. He now popped his head through and is trying to move around with the tapestry. Kind of bung slow. <laughs> Bundled all around him. <laughs> Tech, go get your other swords. You might need them. You like your other swords. Disappears underneath the tapestry a little bit. Magic sword. Keep the magic one, but get your other ones too. He goes back. 
picks up his other swords, but he comes out holding the magic one. Yeah, that's funny. He has all of them. Though. Yeah, he has the other swords uh, put away on his back, and he, he even picked up his wand, but he's chewing on it. Oh yeah. Okay. Oh, I don't think that can help you. Uh, I will walk. But dental hygiene is very important. The hand and I will walk over to. You're taking the hand out. Yeah, it's getting okay, it. on my shoulder. Crawl. It crawls down to the ground. It's looking around. Ooh. It, it points up at it points up at the woman. Which one? The star? The statue? The... Just yeah. the statue? Yes. Stop. Mm. Yes, this woman. Stop. Perhaps we shouldn't be in here. She's watching us. Perhaps. Yes. Get out of this room. Ah, yes. <laughs> ah. Good as always, Zinky <laughs> Maester. Shall we? <laughs> and we're, him and I will stroll back out of the room. Uh, ah, are you coming? We don't want to tarry here. I fear whoever controls it can see us. Where do these other doors go? Which door to the child, Luna? Oh. I'm ah, stop yes. right before I was about to walk through the door. Just gonna pull out the arm, see where, where it starts, where it's pointing. It floats, it floats for a while. Come on. Points directly ahead of the door that you entered in. The double doors in this room squat between it points some sterling there. silver uh, statues that are holding the book and the shield. It points over there. Yep. Well, shall we? We shall. Oh, open the door. I'll stand okay, in the a professor. corner here. The door does not budge. Oh, Ludo, is it locked or something? It won't open. Approach and take a Tech. look at it. Yeah, yeah. Well, there's a lock in the door similar to the other one, but it looks like it's been soldered shut. I'm going to uh, use that Hadeen key again. This, this door also has... Um, Wait, you mean shut in the sense of its seams or the lock itself? The, 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 oh, okay. the space in the lock itself looks like somebody po poured in liquid metal that cooled. Okay. Same as the lock um, getting yeah. into this place. Man Manny's moving over as well. My head doesn't feel too good. Don't look directly at the statues. Oh. I will hide behind the statue so that they can't see me at all. Like, none of them could look at me. Okay. Ludo, what are you doing? He's gonna pull out his wand, look at it, and... Well, I'd like to say I'm a master lock, <laughs> lock picker, but uh, this thing's been doing all the work. He's gonna pull yeah, out. the metal just sort of... You know, disappears and, and this key in its current form is a perfect fit for the door. We it's as if somebody it. made the key for the lock or the lock for the key. This is either really good or really bad. The doors spill open. And there's a familiar sight for anyone who has been in the um, the throne room. Oh. Professor... But it seems to be from a different angle. Oh. Uh, this door opens up here, going in. Uh -huh. There is a stark chamber. Open up the right description. We're a little beat up right now, though. Mm-hmm. Our murder bug is, like, not really in tip-top condition. Uh, he mentally, he's not in tip-top yeah, condition. He he's, he's still, he's still he's in top form. Really my to my PDF is just going nuts right now. There we go. I guess he doesn't need to be as sharp as a tack to go and hit stuff with his sword. No, not exactly. He will be confused by the economy of action, though. He might do... 
foolish things, though. Yeah. The floors and walls of this room are crafted from black marble, streaked with gold veins. Nope, that's not the right one. Sorry. Disregard. The floor is lava. Friggin' hope so. God, you know how much I love black marble streaked with red veins, man. The grand chamber consists of masonry with a vaulted ceiling 30 feet above. A marble tiled floor. There are tiled stairs that lead from the main floor to an elevated area that features a throne made from red quartz. Mm. Um, it is in the same design uh, as the throne that you saw upstairs. Upstairs. In the witch's However, throne. this is red and the one upstairs was black. Okay. Uh, it is engraved with runes and looks partially organic. The wall behind the throne glows red, illuminating the chamber with an, un uh, an otherworldly light. There are two creatures that are poised um, along the dais that raises. They seem to be sleeping, but standing up while sleeping. They're the size of ogres. They have the visages of, uh, of gargoyles, um, uh, cloven feet and clawed hands with teeth and horns. Um, they're just, they look like they're asleep. They, they, they've got their claws kind of neatly tucked over their little, uh, their little, uh, uh scrawny bellies. <laughs> uh, but they're quite large. Hovering in the center of the room seems to be a place where the light and maybe even the air itself bends. And it's kind of like a big floating looking glass. Like the planes themselves are bending at this point. Mm -hmm. And those that are uh, that have seen the throne room could get a knowledge planes or or an int check. Knowledge that planes. I think I don't think I went in. I think I may have been the only one. To I think I looked through, but I don't think I went in. Okay, I'll expose some of the darkness um, outside the door. If you want to arrange yourselves backwards to the door, kind of like flipped to how you're standing now. Uh, Twenty-five knowledge planes. This is the real throne mm -hmm. that you can see from the one above. Okay. Through that portal. This means the person sitting in the throne doesn't have to be on this physically on the same plane with whom they are having an audience. That's convenient. They can do it from upstairs. No, they could sit in this chair yeah. and look at people upstairs. Who, who have gone through the, the, the fire fireplace into yep. the into the room back there. Yeah. yeah. He doesn't fucking walk the 20 feet <laughs> through the hallway upstairs. <laughs> Across the dimension. Although, you're not seeing the front side. It just seems to be some distorted air. Yeah, we're seeing uh, the back. The throne is thankfully empty. Yeah. Uh, and, yeah. um... This throne might be a magical item, like it, it has definitely an air of importance about it. There are two other doors to the, well, you've lost all track of what is north and what is south at this point, yeah. but to the left and to the right, there are two other doors. I guess I shouldn't be exposing where they leave. Fair enough. <laughs> Can we see through this door at this point? Yep, the door is open because Ludo, with the uh, with the key of infinite doors, has opened it. I'll explain the, what I understand about this throne room and how this is the real one. There's a fake one upstairs. You can <laughs> the claws like tapping you on the shoulder. He points towards one of the things, points towards the other one, and climbs up in your face and goes. Ah. <laughs> While you're talking, <laughs> <laughs> it's sort of like face out of your chin. <laughs> we must be. Blind. It boops your nose and then returns to your shoulder. <laughs> man, 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 he just gives just gives Ludo a nudge. Like, are you seeing this thing? <laughs> Ludo, if you're quiet, they won't wake up, I think. See where the string points in the room. Um, Ludo's gonna pull up his nifty string. 
yarn. See what's going on. Okay, the yarn from the scarf that once belonged to Zalara's uh, son um, it had been dragged off by Gedrin and perhaps even given to other things. Uh, simply points to the open doorway. Yeah, I think we have to step through. The door. What are those things? Uh, do I know what they are? What's the knowledge here? Knowledge planes. Another planes one. Uh, I don't know about 14 knowledge of what demons are. Uh, I could also, I also have knowledge planes. Uh, plus nine for me. So can I also do a roll? A separate roll? They are outsiders. Outsiders of some kind? 27? Zephyros knows. Zephyros, have you seen them before? I look at the hand and just shrug. <laughs> Does a 27 help? Yep, I'm gonna... Case okay. to uh, chat what you learn. Okay. Not sound like a fight we want. Uh, perhaps not right now without resting and without cold iron. So the 27 is really good. So there's a. But maybe we can sneak through. Ludo, step through and see if they notice you. If they do, step back and we'll close the door. Seems, uh. There? I would say stay to the sides. Stay to the corners. Don't yeah. walk in the center of the building. He's going to hug the mats on it now. I guess that's hugging the wall. Okay, so you're hugging the wall, so you step through? Yeah. Oh, Wait, which door's just... open? Sorry. Just the. Uh, both of them opened. Like once you kind of open up the lock, they they both kind of swung open. Alright. Uh, you're sneaking in. Give me a stealth check. Thirty-eight. Okay. You sneak into the side. The second you step through the threshold of the uh, uh, of the the rooms, um, you're actually afraid of the throne. The throne itself is impressive. Looks like it. Um, I've been known to not sit in weird chairs. <laughs> I'm going to assume we're going to the top door. Uh, where does this, was the string do once you step through? We pulled it out and just pointed to the door, right? Okay, I'll pull the string out. So you still have the key in your hand? No, I want to steal that away. Where's the string? It wasn't the string wrapped around the key? Yeah, I figured I'd taken it off. At this okay, point so you guys. pulled it off. Where do you have the, the string? Just from my finger. Okay. You're seeing where it's pointing? It seems to be pointing at the throne. I was back there. <laughs> because why not? <laughs> I'm going to gesture like, I'm going up. I'm going to just go to the very corner and stop. Okay. Neither one of the the guardian daemons have moved. They seem to be like statues, living statues. I think they'll probably only attack us if we go down the stairs. Uh, the stairs leading up. <clears throat> go up the stairs. Uh, I will cast... Vanish on myself. You have vanishes left? Uh, I got 
Got some, Bet. some story. <laughs> right, you're just burning through your points, okay? I'll step Manny is like looking to see where to where go. Step through the door. Check, si- check, check. Silently. Comes, just wanders right in front of Zephyros and wanders up to uh, Ferrisse. He's got the blade out. Attack. I'll, I'll wander through with tech. I'll but, pull out the hero deck and... And then I'll say, <laughs> just wait. And kneel with it in front of me and see if it reacts. What did you do? So pull out the harrow deck once I'm on the other side here. Um, what you get from the harrow deck is an intense hatred. Mm. I'll, I'll focus on it. There's also a motherly fear. Mm, I'll, I'll just let that wash over for me for a moment or two with my eyes closed while people okay. are moving around or whatever. We're Manny doing. steps into the room. I'll make space for Zephyros. Thank you. And the professor's tiny, so he's wee right now, so you could be actually be in his corner. The wee professor. Uh, I'll see him. Coming through and move my whole operation off, off to the side here so he can just be in the doorway. Cool. Yeah, there's definitely, like, the air of the room's kind of, like, bending a little bit, and you can see, like, a, a change in pressure along along this oval. You can just see the throne through the oval. Like, it, it's not uh, nothing. It's just obscuring sight a little bit. Sideways halo for this infernal chair. Yeah, and the throne is where her hatred and her motherly fear is focused, right? Yep. Seems like ooh, her son was sacrificed to whatever sits on the throne or something like that. So what's the deal with the two demons? Do we run and sit on the throne and command them? Imagine that. The professor is tempted for a moment as he considers the <laughs> prospect. Okay, the motherly fear grows in intensity when you think of that prospect. Uh, I will say quietly to Zephyrus, no, 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 don't do that. I don't see us fighting these things. Baby, oh. we should come back later when we're prepared. What is uh, Icky Maxer's hand doing? Uh, just sitting on your clutching on your shoulder yes it's visible so just, just <laughs> the hand <laughs> disembodied her uh, uh, do we have some hand right right right. Right. I think we need to rest before we tackle this one I agree Shall perhaps head back to the first room and check some of the hatches up and down before heading home Sounds good to me. The door's you. Yes, but this room isn't cleared, Mandrius. If we have to beat a hasty retreat, we may walk from one foe into another. Ludo, what are you doing? These things look like they're sleeping. Yeah. They've got their eyes closed and they're just sort of standing there. Going to attempt a little more, Marty. <laughs> Dangle some fucking cheese in front of him. He's gonna stand next to Manny and use Zephyros as a large shield. <laughs> I gotcha. Thanks. <laughs> Worked in the past. Let's go back. Let's check the pat- hatches above and below the room with the imp. Check those bones, maybe. Fair say, there's something about this chair. You're a bard. You got bardic knowledge, right? I do. Bard. Give me a knowledge arcana. That's a lot. Okay. No aiding on this. No, there's eighteen. The chair is probably magical. Um, it it's like the chair itself is intimidating. Yeah. Just fair say 
share her thoughts on this? So all of you feel the imposing, like, probably a magic the chair. chair. <clears throat> uh, Ferrisay making the remark that it's probably a magic chair. The professor is interested now, wants to knowledge the chair. What was it? Yeah, now you guys can eat each other now that you're talking out loud about it. What was the knowledge on Knowledge Arcana. You can make your own role, uh, uh, Zephyrus, or you could aid okay. the professor. I've got a plus 13, professor. Oh, I'll aid you then. So it's plus 13 normally, becomes 15 with your aid. Any other aids? Mm, I've already rolled. Okay, so 1d20 plus 15 it is. 33. Oh, oh you've, you've seen this thrown in like a catalog of powerful items before. It is called the Red Throne of the Arch Fae. The properties of the throne is that the person sitting in it is more terrible, tricky, wise-tongued, and perceiving of lies. It's a nice throne. Yeah, fuck yeah. <laughs> it's a great one to have in your audience chamber. <laughs> With a 33, you know the Arch Fae is a nickname for Baba Yaga. <gasps> uh, nice, nice. It was terrible, it makes you look terrible, intimidating. Yep. And see through lies. Like some line, like, even the commonest of peasants would be imposing sitting in the red throne of the Archfey, let alone a, a, a king of kings. <clears throat> the Archfey, Baba Yaga. That was a good roll. Thank you for the aid. We must come back, but we're not ready yet, I fear. The hand's like... <laughs> yes, yes. Points to the chair. Yes. Points at you. Me? Points at the chair. Into the chair? No. No. Oh, I couldn't possibly... The professor is slowly moving forward. <laughs> no. Zephyrus so grabs him with his tusk. Up invisible. Turn, turn around. Oh, crap. <laughs> I'll turn around in the circle looking at <laughs> No, no, not yet. Is it probably... Is it pointing back towards the door? No, it's just pointing back at you, like... Yeah, that's it. Can we go through the door? Is the door still open? Uh, the door is still open. At some point in... This silliness of me spinning around talking to the hand will turn visible again and go, oh! <laughs> Quickly scared. <laughs> right. <laughs> Zephyrus walks out the door. Yeah, I'm going through too. Okay, the two gargoyle-ish daemons uh, do not move an inch throughout all of this. Like nothing you did at that end of the room roused them from their sleep. I'll go through last with with Tech um, and head towards the, the imp room. Tech's still got two at his sword, two of his hands, still waving it towards them, just waiting. Good job, Tech. Good job. Come with me. We will go back to the room where you found the sword. <laughs> Looks down at you and he's just following you like a puppy dog. Is he ever going to be the same again? Sure. Okay. Manny closes the door. Why are you asking me? <laughs> well, it's more general. Shh. <laughs> I'll walk towards the, the, the other room. Oh, okay. Yeah, I think we're heading back to the imp room. Uh, oh, shit. The statues are all just back to the way they were before. Oh, ah, okay. Um, as we're going through, Tech knocked one of these tapestries down, right? Yeah, he he um 
he was he wrecked that one tapestry, um, which is now no longer wrecked and hanging from its uh, from its um, oh, curtain rods. Hmm. What did the tapestries depict? Uh, the the tapestries depict. Um, the stars as well as hags flying through the sky the stars don't look like astrology maps they look more like um like cartoonish depictions of stars like stylized depictions you do notice that there are hags um, um boiling things in a cauldron. On one of them, they're flying through the air uh, upon broomsticks. Uh, another one, it looks like they're in a cave and they have, they have something in their hand. Is it an eyeball that they're passing around? It is an eyeball. Okay. And what, what did we hear about that? And on the fourth yeah. one, there is a hag. It's almost kind of like a stylized picture of the shadow of a hag that seems to be flying in the air in a gigantic thing that looks like a, a uh, like a pestle. Hmm. Any of them seem to be... She's alone? Uh, are they all the... This down's alone, but the others might be... The covens. others are in threes. Yes. Yep. So that's the Archfey and some Covens. Yeah. One is, uh, one's passing around an eye. What were the others doing? Uh, the others were mixing what looked like children in a cauldron. Oh, okay. Uh, and then the, then there were three flights of three that were all flying on brooms. Okay. All right. I'll, I'll take this all in as I quickly cross the room and go back into the... So, um... Baba Yaga, you're probably thinking she's flying in uh, a pestle. And then there's uh, three flights of three eggs. And then there are three eggs with an eye. And then three eggs. Um, Cooking children in a cauldron. <laughs> Delightful. Yeah. Okay, there are several doors in this uh, in this in this room. One of which that you guys came through, and one of which that you guys just recently explored. Where are you heading? Uh, back to the room with the imp. Okay. Uh, we're gonna explore the up and down from that room. Uh, particularly the down, which was a bit of a secret door. See if it's stash. Yeah. Okay, you're back in the room. Uh, you can hear the imp moving around invisibly, knocking into uh, knocking into some supplies and, and things. It looked like it went back to making candles when you guys left, and you startled it when you came piling back into this room. It, it tries to disappear in its same hiding spot. I will turn and look at it and go, You're not fooling anyone! I can see you! It brings its hand to its mouth like... Quiet. Oh, shush yourself. I'll start rummaging in this, this bone <laughs> thing. It puts it in its own hands, in its own claws, like it's sad at that, 
Yeah, yeah that's uh, me and uh, Icky Maester are gonna check out these bones. I'll detect some magic and start poking around in here. So. Oh, there's an incredible amount of necromancy coming off of the bin. I will <laughs> pull my hand back before I get too deep into touching it. Okay. Oh, what do you think, Icky Maester? Hmm. I'll keep keep detecting magic on it and trying to figure out what's going on with this. Give me a spellcraft check. Sephiroth. Come have a look at this. Intense necromancy. Oh, I went to the other room, Professor. <laughs> I can't aid you on this one. I can aid you. <laughs> and I will. <laughs> and I auto. Nice. I'm sure Zephyros would be interested in that as well. Uh, if he does... I'd like to help the brother out. Yeah, if he does, it's 37. If not, 35. 35? If he aids me, it's 37. Okay, this strange trunk of bones uh, has a single purpose. Yeah. To hold and magically dispense the skeletons of creatures that you need. Ooh. Do I know how to use it? Uh, yes. Uh, in fact, there are several command words, and you basically... Um, say what type of creature you need, and if the trunk is storing it, it will surface those bones to the top. I'm gonna see what the max I can do on this thing is. These are like crap. Um, I hate these <laughs> I don't think there's a size restriction on this. I'll look through and start trying to figure out what the biggest creature in here is. It's not how it works. No? It's like a giant trunk of bone holding. I'll start thinking of the biggest creatures I know. <laughs> okay. A dragon! What kind of dragon? An undead one! Of course! <laughs> Okay, the bones shift a little bit eerily on their own end. Um, it doesn't summon forth a undead dragon. Oh, damn it, I was close there. Hmm. Think, Kiki Maester. What do we need right now? Not um, an undead dragon, you idiot. Well, I'll I'll start uh, I'll start uh, uh, with Ludo. Try to try to point Ludo at the floor that has sort of the the opening. And see if we can open that. Hmm. Does, do I know stupid undead? I'm trying to think of unintelligent undead. It doesn't summon undead. It summons a set of bones that can be then animated. Yes. It's a trunk of dead bodies, but in bone form. Ah, then I need... Where was it? Sorry, I said skeleton, and that is a creature, so apologies for the... That was my bad. Uh, what was that? What was that? Can I do a spooky spell where I summon undead? <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? Animate skeleton. That's what I'm looking for. Medium size or smaller? Uh, what's the most ferocious medium-sized creature? Pharisee, you're a student of the wild. What's the most ferocious medium-sized creature you could think of? Have you seen what humans have done in their horrible little cities? Yes, but I was thinking something with a little more flat. They're just the worst. You know, something just the worst. With, like horns and claws. Sharp teeth, you know, those sorts of things. Um. The, the Bogart was not particularly friendly. Mm. Mm. Minotaur is medium size? How about like a bear? It's like a small bear. Like a medium-sized bear? 
Would a medium-sized bear be a large creature? <laughs> what is the spell that you're trying to cast? Oh, I can't prepare it. I'm just going to try and think of the best bones I can think of and then take them out and save them for later. I'm going to use animate skeleton later. It has to be a medium-sized creature, though, or smaller. Mm-hmm. Are we going to rest here, or where are we going to rest? Okay, what creature? Um, uh, is Ludo messing with the trap? The professor is talking to his undead pants. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm examining the door. <laughs> the, the hand just goes like, points at Ferrisay. <laughs> Thumbs up. And is pointing at... Um, Zephyrus' staff, and I don't know if you carry a weapon, like a dagger, it points at that. Points at Ferrisay again, thumbs up. Then point, is pointing at weapons. Mm -hmm. Whoa, weapons? <clears throat> Ferrisay will pick up her, her weapon mm -hmm. that she left in the weapon bin. Yep. Oh, I didn't put it. I don't carry any weapons. I just carry a magical shavers kit to keep my mustache trimmed up. Okay, you could, you could see, you could hear move, moving around the little, the little imp. You don't know his name yet, but we'll just call him Moop. Moop. Is there anything dangerous down, down below? Just knock twice if there is. Move comes to the edge and is looking at you. He's no longer invisible. Knock once if there isn't. Uh -huh. I'll turn and look at him and sense motive if he's lying. <laughs> Covers his eyes. Open it up. If it's if there's something dangerous down there. We'll kill you. 20 on the sense motive? Uh, it, you get that it's afraid of Ferrisay. Mm, you seem to have made quite the impression on him. Poor Mook. Yes. Tech has got his blade out. He's just ready. Catch him sort of staring off at a wall. <clears throat> ah, I wonder if this will work. Books! How about the skeleton of a... Uh, what were those things called? Not Thrycreens, the other one? The other bugs? Oh, uh... Formians? Formian, yeah. yeah. It's not really a skeleton, but... Maybe. What does the bone box do? Uh... Spit up shells? It does not have the shells of a Formian. What about a th you, the, 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 bone, the bones do shift around a little bit, but nothing. How about a Thrycreen? Have shit in. Nah, it just shifts around. Mm. That, that would save you. Know, what are you doing? Just like some big box. Box. So it's just a pull ring. Okay. <clears throat> I'm gonna look at me and like, I have a hand. Yeah. Let's just do this open. <clears throat> uh, you pull the pull ring, you open it up. Um, there's definitely a space that you can't see down in it. Uh, there's a murky blackness that um, the light of this room is not permeating. Anybody have a light? Oh, light? Oh, somewhere here. You can cast light on an object, right? Yep. Mm -hmm. uh, I'll do actually dancing lights and throw them down there. Okay, the dancing lights go down there. You can feel them moving around, but the second they cross the threshold, they are no longer visible. Mm -hmm. Afraid you just gotta stick your head in and see if you can see. <laughs> I'll stick my head in. Okay, Mo Moops, like looking to see what happens. Um, and just sort of look around. Is okay, there light so down there. Ferris is gonna look around. Do you have dark vision? Uh, no, but there are dancing lights down there. Uh, yeah. Um, there is absolutely no light down there. And. There is a foul, wet smell. 
Uh, this is really random and off topic. It's a putrid odor that hangs in the air. It kind of reminds you of um, a boozy sewer. Sort of a rotting, a sort of a rotting, uh, uh, ferment, fermenting scent. Mm -hmm. uh, like a sewer. Um, you think you might hear like some dripping water? Entirely dark, even with your dancing lights down there. There is a bit of uh, moisture in the air. It's like humid and kind of cold and clammy. Cold, wet. Uh, can I smell it from just above? The, uh, outside? The door? No. No. No smell from above, though. Maybe it's another threshold of some sort. Moop's is this is this where you where you dump the trash, Moop? Two for yes. Is there something in there that eats the trash? Hmm. Yeah, he's pointing down, he's covering his eyes. Uh, he doesn't know. It's dark, you can't see down there, I suppose. What did we ever do with those skeletons we got from Gedrin? Has anyone seen those about? Hmm. <clears throat> Ferris just bones? looks around. Oh, they meant the ones wondering. I think there was only one left. Where did that ever end up? I wouldn't mind making use of that if possible. For what? Well, for, you know, get into a pinch. I'm often invisible. Summoning a skeleton is not going to make me visible, but it gives us a skeleton. Seems reasonable. I ignore the pressure. <laughs> Moop's just listening to all of you. Is there anything valuable down there, Moop? Any reason we would want to go other than trash? Could the spell the smell be magical? Like a protection mechanism to prevent us from going down there? Could be brewing Move, um, something. Moop thinks for a minute. He's thinking hard on this one. He looks to Farisay. Well, answer him. No? Yeah. I'll, I'll poke my head in once was more. Is it one for yes? It may have changed. One for yes, two for no. <laughs> we Let's say it's one for yes, two for no. <laughs> okay, yeah, he, he, he knocked. Was it? I one. forgot. Okay, yeah. one, one. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think you switched it halfway, which is. I'm kind of an ass. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yep. Might be worth going down, tie a rope on someone, sneak about, pull them back up if they get into trouble. Drink something in your belly. It's like a, like a big vat of some sort of potion. Sounds like you're volunteering, Professor. Oh, me? You wouldn't know. You've never had any. You're gonna put the thing with it. I'll poke my head through again and hold Pixel in my hand. Okay. And Pixel will light up down there. Yeah, Pixel's saying, It's dark! Mm -hmm. She can't see anything. You can't see her. You can't see an inch in front of I'll her. I'll pull right up. Does Magic anyone have dark vision? Serious magical <laughs> darkness in there. Uh, I don't know. Mm, probably not. Moop, Moop's now just watching what you guys are doing. Moop. Uh, Does anyone have big magical light? Yes, I do. I just I have like bigger than bigger than cantrips. No, I'm afraid not. Uh, no, I have flare as a cantrip. 
Tech, tech is now moving towards Moop with the great sword. I have a flaming spear. Is that gonna is that gonna give us light? Don't kill him yet. Don't tech, kill him yet. Tech, no. <laughs> would would a flaming sphere give us light? Mm. It's I not a cantrip. I think you want a powerful light spell. Because the darkness is magical. You need magical light that's more powerful than magical darkness. Oh. Tech is now just sort of like slowly tapping the blade against the uh, against the plate of his head. I'll go up to. It's Mur okay. You'll be better soon. So what kind of what kind of light spell is there that isn't a cantrip? Blinding light, they're like daylight, all that stuff. Ah, oh, there is okay. a higher level light spell. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, I'll go up to move move and say, hey, move. You seem to be somewhat of a candle craftsman. What do you make of this? I will pull out the candle <laughs> of Bull <Bulbodnathep. laughs> He twitches a little bit. He's slowly like a cat, first unsure, climbs down from his uh, his position and is just sitting on a stove. He sits down on an element, like it's a seat. You heard a little bit of a tss, but it didn't seem to bother Moop. <laughs> He's an infernal creature, it's fine for him. Yep. He holds out his little clausies oh, towards he, you. Yes, yes, of course. Yes. Take a look. <laughs> he looks at the candle. He sticks his claw that he stuck into the candle a little bit into his ear. Mm -hmm. Good, yes, good quality. Well, we're waiting here. Could you make more for me? I pull out the wax I took from uh, whatever that lady was when she was infused in Balbonathep's wax. He's pulling that little tea candle. He make some more for me. Form them. He looks at Ferrisse. He's crazy, but sure. Okay, Moop takes the wax and begins melting it. Oh, you can you can give one of them to Moop, yes? So don't see why not. There you go, Moop. Okay, he, he seems to be going about You have a weird wax candle too. He's going about his business. Yeah, I've got <clears throat> three candles worth of wax sweated out by Balbodnathip supplicants, specifically whatever that Groovy the candle maker? Halfling girl was when oh. she made the candle. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Alright, well Moop's making making some candles for you. Thank you. What, about, what about up? We could we could dip a rope down in there and see if we could get something, but I yeah. wonder if a light from an infernal candle would burn down there. Are there things are there things up, Moop? Are there creatures up? Three for you don't know. What the hell is four? Double no! Back to work! <laughs> Are the creatures there? Are there back to work. things? You asked two questions, did you not, Pharisee? What were your two questions? Oh, are there things up there? Are there people up there? No, we no, know. I believe are the answers. All right, all right. Shall well, we take a look? Let's take a look. Is it uh, just a little? Is it a special door or a regular door? It is a um, a hatch at the top of a ladder. Oh, okay. Let's uh, let's pop the hatch open. Um, who will pop the hatch open? Hmm. Do you want to check it out, Ludo? <laughs> See if it looks like a safe hatch or a dangerous hatch? Um, Ludo's going to <laughs> examine this hatch. Okay, maybe he helps you, helps you open the ladder when you climb to the top. Sure. You're examining the hatch, give me a perception check for, for traps. Twenty-five. Looks safe enough. <laughs> it looks safe enough! <laughs> <laughs> you you see a little bit of like gray fur caught in the trap door 
It might be a dog hatch or something. I don't. It, it, there's there's furs. Huh. Gray furs. Smell it. Uh, knowledge nature or survival to figure out what kind of animal this is. <laughs> I think I would have survival. 